Hello and welcome to Tea Time with Torloth. Today I'm doing things very differently. This is the upcoming games of this year and next year that were announced in the last month or so. Um, I am going to do the outro still with the camera, but I'm trying to get through this as fast as possible and I'm kind of recording this very differently from how I usually do it. So right now I have the sizzle reel playing from the New Game Plus Expo, and honestly, that was a pretty good showing. A lot of interesting things were shown. Um, there were a lot of people upset that Persona 6 wasn't announced. Sega literally had a live stream afterwards of just someone, no commentary, just playing Catherine full body. Yeah, you figure that one out. Uh, a lot of the games they're showing here are ports from other platforms like PC or whatever to consoles. If I had to fault the presentation on one thing, the sizzle reel has a very poor representation of where these games are going and what they were on. We're here to talk about games, and that's what I'm going to do. Starting with the New Game Plus Expo, which you're watching the sizzle reel from right now with some release dates again some of these games are already out and that's fine some of them are pretty old and they're getting ports and they didn't tell us where they were going what was going on uh it was very nintendo directy without knowing what platform stuffs are going on so some of these games you might see again a little later in the presentation because i really liked what they were going for and i'm gonna take a look at them but this is the end of the sizzle reel right here, so I'm going to get into other stuff. Billion Road. I'm going to be honest, it looks like a quirky little silly uh, board game. I might give it a look later. I'm not one to play board games by myself. But uh, it looks pretty fun. Um... It looks like you go around Japan and you get collect monsters and try and get a billion yen. And then there's a random mode online, which is weird. So, I don't know. It looks cute. It looks fun. Some of them love it. And it's on sale right now, apparently. Check it out. Criminal Girls and Everything But Name. Um... If this is anything like the Japanese version, you probably don't want to play it, but feel free to look up into it. Only included because I was interested until I realized what it was. You ever see something and think what you're seeing is just absolute insanity and it's not real, right? Like it, it can't be real, but it's right there in front of you and there's a demo on Steam and you can actually play it. it it's a real thing. That That's fight crap. Game of the year right now. Just just throwing it down. It's, it is the best game of 2020. <laughs> uh, okay, all joking aside, uh, Yakuza Tufts on motorcycles that are crabs and fighting things with like a chainsaw. And, uh, I don't I don't know what to think about this game. It looks absolutely nutty and insane. This is probably indeed the perfect party game since it does have online and offline 1v1 and 2v2 battles apparently the object of the game is to flip over your opponent um, these guys seem to make a lot of weird sea creature-esque fighting games but this one's the zaniest anytime i can use a chainsaw in a video game it's just a good time I'm just watching the footage right now and I'm like, this is a real game. Someone made this. This is why indie games are the best, guys. This is why indie games need to be supported. So we can get more wacky stuff like this. Ah, uh, fight grab. Death Send Request 2. I used the music all the time from the first game. I absolutely loved it. I am ready to see what the second one has to offer. 
considering these are all different characters from the first one, I can tell just by looking at them. Though apparently the other characters are in the game. I have this thing, if you've already sold me on your game, I'm not going to watch any of the press on it. So I've barely watched any of the press. I looked at the website briefly just to see if there was a release date or anything, but I didn't really read into anything. So August 25th, I'm ready. Let's go. I love that there's two Bloodstained games without the main character Miriam in it. That makes me laugh a little. Zengetsu has been in more games than Miriam. But that's cool. This game's actually co-op. They showed it off in a stream immediately after the New Game Plus Expo that my brother was watching and he got really excited when he saw it was co-op. Because then we could play it together, because there's not a lot of games we get to play together. And there's a corgi in a power armor suit that looks like a train, guys. It's the pain train. I don't know, it just looks like a solid retro platformer. So, check that out. This year sometime? They said soon. It's Neptune! Lover or hater, here she is. I don't, I don't know. I'm gonna play this game. I'm a sucker for Neptune. All of her stupid meta jokes. And friendless noir. So, whoever's playing this obviously doesn't play games like this since they're not moving the camera a lot. Or maybe it's just for footage. You know how it is. Anyway, what's fun? What's silly? Virtual YouTubers and nap. And a weird rhythm game. Legend has it that Riva, God Shiren, of Destiny, the Tower of Fate, tower of fortune, or it's a long title. Of all mankind, with a trio of magic dice. If you like this kind of game, it looks Shiren pretty cool. Uh, more including it because it looks cool. I don't know if I'd fortune. actually play much of it, Explore if at all. It reminds me of play. an old RPG Adapt I played at one point. On the fly to deal with fearsome monsters and fatal Be damned if I can remember what it was actually called. During your adventure and you lose all your hard-earned gear and money. But it but looks cool. Along the way. Looks interesting no anyway. No one to run. So, no it's grid based it looks all. like. And procedurally generated roguelite, and it was saying, or something like that. Luck, have another player revive you via oh, if you like those kind of games, here you go. Continue from where you were defeated. With new bonus dungeons, your adventure never ends. This was a game I saw, and I was like, this looks like a Saturday morning cartoon for little girls. And I kind of wanted to start ribbing on it or be mad about it. But my niece would like this. Like, look how cute those rabbits are. This little rabbit maid and she's got a little hat. Ugh, it's adorable. I'm not going to play it, but I might get it for my niece. And then we have Call of the Sea oh, here. Harry. At first, I wasn't really sold on it, but... Again, looking back and seeing so it's on Game Pass, you. I'll give it a look. How strange it looks like some sort of here. adventure exploration game where you're on like a remote there island and you're dreams. going around trying to figure out the mysteries of the past. I don't know if there'll be any combat in this that? game or if it'll be one of those more spooky hideaway away. kind of games, but uh, it looks pretty interesting and the visual identity this of this place is really aisle. cool i dare say i found my strength again i'm scared of what it means i feel the call of something deep within whispers of things long i don't know if we have a release date though i will have will to look at that be forgotten but... too? what did you find here Harry? it's very interesting that's all i can say
Yakuza like a dragon. It's a JRPG, Yakuza game. I don't know what to say, this game looks wackadoo. Absolutely wackadoo. And... I know my brother's really excited for it, but I know that I'm probably going to watch him play it because that's what we do with games like this. Like, just look at this. This, this is like, yeah, let's go, go fight, go throw down. Love it. I just, I absolutely love it. It just looks so ridiculous. That's every Yakuza game though. They're just completely ridiculous. So, <laughs> did that guy just turn into a crab? Is that a crab man? Is that an orbital laser? Like, I, don't, I don't know. This game's wacko. I love wacko games. Okay, this one is called Scorn. And it's very H.R. Giger, Geiger, I don't, not 100% sure how you pronounce it, so apologies on that one. Um, this game's apparently been a, in Kickstarter and development hell for a while, um, but it is going to be on Game Pass and it's finally coming out. It's... We didn't see a lot here, really. It's very surreal looking. And there's weird HR Gagire penises and stuff. That was like his thing, was like pregnancy and like weird. Yeah, see, pregnancy? And. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, honestly, this is pretty mature and maybe it'll gross you out and you won't want to play it, but I'm interested. I don't know if I'll make a whole video on it, but I'm interested. I think gameplay was like a first person shootery thing, but I, I can't tell from this and there was like the only gameplay I could find was like pre-alpha, so I don't know if it's still like that. It's just weird. Like I said, weird and kind of gross. If it's too gross, I'll just turn it off and never talk about it again. Oh, this game. This is the medium uh, from Lubertine. They're the devs that made Layers of Fear, uh, Blair Witch. And what was the other? I can't remember the game they're known for at the moment, but... Um, Blair Witch was a game that I didn't want to play because there was a dog in it that could die. Don't put dogs in your game and no, can die. I don't like that. But this game, this just looks so Silent Hill, it, it hurts. And they got the um, original composer, oh, I'm forgetting his name. To work on this one, you're probably hearing a little bit of that crazy ambient music and just... It looks so cool. Oh.
So this was my combination of New Game Plus Expo and that May Xbox event. Not really all the May Xbox event, just some of it. And yeah, maybe a lot of these games aren't exclusive to one platform or another. It's been an interesting year since we're not getting the usual E3. Without the usual E3 sort of deal going on and without the usual sort of affair, it's been a weird year. That's all I gotta say. It's been a very weird year. What games did I miss? What games did you see that I posted that you think are really cool? You can even go from that sizzle reel at the beginning. Like it's, um, a bunch of those were coming soon. There was one in there I really wanted to look at more, but there's not a lot of information on the game. And the longer trailer makes it look more like a Legend of Zelda game than a just exploration game, like the sizzle reel shows. I put it on my wish list on Steam, so that's the only place it's posted right now. So whenever it comes up, I will take a look at it for sure. This is really weird though, because this is going to be probably the first time, and I recall, that Microsoft went second at um, an event or to reveal a console. So they've got Sony's put most of their cards on the table. They're holding that one card close to their chest that has the price on it. And with the way the economy is right now in a lot of places, price point is going to matter to move these consoles. So I guess that's why they're going with these all digital SKUs to try and make something cheaper. But a Blu-ray drive for for like us to buy is about a hundred bucks. A Blu-ray drive when you're buying them in the millions, it's not that much is my point. There's, like, I don't know what the parts and labor, whatever it is to put it in the system. But I don't know if it's going to be a huge price reduction. I also don't see myself wanting to purchase either side's digital only console. I kind of like physical games. I know I put a lot of stuff on Steam, but when I can get a physical copy, I like to have it. I was going to talk about the Pokemon expansion. The first part, fine, but I think Isle of Armor is fine. It adds one thing that people wanted back, and I hope they can patch it for the rest of the game. That was Pokemon That Follow You. Oh yeah, Mixer's dead. That's the other thing. Mixer's dead. I'm gonna, when I stream again, I'll be back on Twitch. Twitch TV slash Torlock. I'll leave it in the link below. Until next time. Matane.